Hi, everyone. My name is Lydia Creasy with Lydia's Home Team and Remax Alliance, and I'm here with Sherry Brown, and we are super excited to talk about the ins and outs of new construction. Jim couldn't be with us today, um, so we will chat through all this together and uh, go through all the discussion points that we have in mind. As we get going, uh, we had a master list of all the different discussion points that we wanted to talk about today. And as we did so, we realized, wow, we have a lot more to say about this than we than we thought. So here is a, just a list of the different things that we are going to discuss throughout our webinar today. Uh, we'll kind of skip through this and go through a lot more in detail on each one of these. So the first and foremost thing is that we're going to talk a lot about the pros and cons of new construction. and there's there's a lot to both sides of that. So we'll we'll start off with talking about the pros, which is a little bit easier and a little bit more fun. Um, but we'll we'll start off with that. So as far as the pros of new construction, um, let me just get that slide switched over one. I think it's it's going a little slow. Here we go. Okay. So as far as the the pros of new construction, I mean, who doesn't get excited about a house that is new and modern and never been lived in? I mean, that's that's the easy stuff. And especially if you're kind of comparing it to maybe your current house or, you know, other houses that you've seen on the market that may need some updating or some renovations. So that's that's the easy part. Of course, those things are going to seem exciting and fun. Um, but uh, in addition, Energy efficiency and smart home features are huge components of this decision. So it's obviously much easier to, you know, include some of those great features when you're looking at a newer home or a brand new home. And those are super important to buyers. I mean, more and more people are having electric vehicles in their garage. More and more people are controlling every single thing in their house by their smartphone. So again, great compatibility that you're going to see with anything built in the last like five to 10 years, but especially um, you're always wowed by the new construction homes um, with those features. And then of course, customization, that's the fun part, right? Everybody would love to pick out their paint colors and, you know, basically have the freedom to pick out carpet, pick out countertops and cabinets. I mean, that's, that's super fun. And we also think that's so fun. So we love to be a part of that process as well. So we really pride ourselves on being there at your design appointments, if it's at all possible, or if you want us there, um, because we can really guide you in that process and make sure that you're making some smart decisions. And Sherry's going to really go into detail with that. Um, but it, it makes a huge difference. And in your overall spend and also just making sure that you are picking selections that work for you, but also aren't going to prohibit like other buyers from buying your house later on down the road. So um, customization, there's so much that goes into um, the floor plan that you pick and also the lot that you pick. Um, it, those things are super important in your value and your negotiation with the builder. Um, the elevation is the front of your house, the facade, kind of how it looks from the street, how much stone, how much siding you have. And that's something that a lot of times you can pick, especially if you're um, starting at the very beginning of this process. If you're kind of getting into a new construction home that's already in the process of being built, you may not have that freedom. But if you're starting from the dirt, you usually do have that freedom. So kind of walking through that as well. And then interior upgrades, I mentioned that a little bit already, but obviously all the fun things, all the cosmetic things that really make the house your own. Another super great thing about buying a new construction house is just the ability to have that peace of mind with the warranty. So what's typical with a brand new house is that you're going to have two types of warranties that come with a property. So the first one is usually one to two years, and that's what they call the bumper to bumper warranty. And that's going to cover pretty much everything in the house, your appliances and all of those things will be covered by the manufacturer. 
Um, and then anything within the house, electrical plumbing is going to be covered by the builder in that first one to two years, just depending on, on which builder that you end up going with. But then in addition, there's also a, a structural warranty and that is super important because a lot, a lot of times as you go through that process, you don't start to notice things about your house until you've been in there for a little bit. Or uh, Colorado is just known for some settling. We have expansive soils. And so sometimes those issues take a little time to present themselves. And there's a natural, uh, normal amount of settlement that will occur, but then there's also some things to be aware of and to be keeping an eye on. And we really want to make sure that you're protected in that. So we'll guide you through that process. So even, even in these beginning steps, when you're, um, you know, picking the lot, you know, all the way until you've owned the house for eight to 10 years, we're ready, willing, and able to chat with you about the different things that can come up and how we can guide you and just make sure that you're protected and that everything's just going great in your new community. So as far as a few more pron, uh, pros to mention is just safety and building code. So I was in a new construction walkthrough last week and every time I go, I'm amazed and I see something else that they've added to the building code. And it can be different from one county to another, but it's always improving is, is basically the gist of it. So it's always getting better. There is always great things that they're adding to that code. And if you're buying something brand new, then you're getting the best of that. So. Some of the other fun things about new construction is just the community itself. It's so fun to get in and, you know, everybody's moving in about the same time. You're meeting new people, um, you're exploring the area, and that's really great. And a lot of times there'll be different events and activities that really bring people together. And so it's, it's a great time to take advantage of that. I know when I moved into my house, like I loved that, you know, just that community all the time. And, you know, those people are lifelong friends of mine. So it's, it's super important, super fun. And then as far as the financing side of things, you know, as far as interest rates have gone over the last couple of years, it's, it's been tough. It's been challenging. I mean, that makes a big difference on your monthly payment. So if a builder has the ability and most of them are doing some significant incentives right now, um, it makes a huge difference on your payment. I mean, it can make a thousand dollar difference on your payment, five hundred thousand dollar difference on that payment. So that is a lot. You know, that makes a big difference in your in your takeaway each month. So we really pride ourselves on keeping a running tab of what those are, and so that way, you know, we can save you some time, and we'll kind of go into that in more detail. But we kind of know what each builder is doing, what their incentives are. So that way you can take advantage of that and we can narrow it down for you a little bit too. And then lastly, um, unless Sherry has anything to add as far as pros, just it's awesome to move into something that's fresh and clean. And, you know, you just get to do the unpacking, which is the fun part, not the packing, which is not quite as fun. So anything else that you had to add, Sherry, as far as pros? No, I mean, there's just, I about the four houses that I have purchased um, in the Colorado area, the Boulder area, um, three of them have been new builds. And all three of them have been did at different stages that I bought them. One, I got to start from scratch. One was um, close to the finish line. So I only got to pick a few things. And then one was a spec home, which was brand new and it was all done for me. And I, but I did fall in love with it. So I am a very big fan of uh, new construction, um, know it well, uh, and uh, have helped many clients go through it. But there are a lot of great reasons to, to consider um, a new construction property. Cool. So there's always the flip side of the coin. So as far as the cons of new construction, you know, these things can all be managed and mitigated, but they're just things to keep in mind. So the first one is really the cost. So we spoke about some of those financing incentives that come into play, but a lot of times people don't really get that full bottom line idea of how much it's going to cost um, because there's add-ons that happen. So, you know, it's the base price of the house and then you have your 
um, upgrades that you pick. And a lot of times it's very easy to go overboard at the design center. And then there's structural options that um, have to be picked right at the very beginning of the contract. And those tend to be the most expensive because they are things like, do you want a full basement or a partial basement? Do you want a walkout basement? And that makes a big difference in that cost. So I would just say a lot of times there's a little bit of a clickbait reaction as people see, oh, you know, price is starting at, you know, X amount of money. But in the end, it's very easy to get 100, 200, 300,000 above that price um, when it's all said and done. And again, those are the things that we love to help with because there are ways to make it so that that is so much better, so much more strategic. Um, but we just don't want you to go in blindly. So then as far as customization, so a lot of times people may go into this process and just think that they can control everything and they can pick every little thing. And that's still not the case because the builder, they want to stay on a schedule and they want to, you know, be able to make sure that those upgrades and customizations make sense for the neighborhood and also for their timeline. So, you know, certain builders are going to be more apt to let you customize and maybe make, allow you to do everything for the most part. And that's more of a custom build. And of course, it's going to be more expensive. But then the other side of the spectrum is that you will have some builders that say, yes, you know, it's new construction, but really you're picking between package A, package B. Um, as far as that customization goes. So, you know, when we're able to chat with you about your goals and kind of what you're envisioning, um, we can we can talk through that. So you you might find yourself that you need some more in the middle of the road, or you might really find that you just, all you care about is something that's brand new and you don't care about how much customization, or you may find that you're like, I just want to do this right. I want to do it from, you know, the dirt all the way to walking in that front door. So we can definitely guide you in that as well. I would say one other con, you know, I mentioned with my experience with new construction that I, I loved it. I met so many great people. Those are lifelong friends and people I trust with my life and my kids and all that stuff. Um, but obviously, you know, you're coming into a neighborhood and you you don't necessarily know what those dynamics will be, will be fun, will you like the vibe of the neighborhood? And so, you know, it's important. Um, we always tell people to, you know, spend time in the neighborhood that you're gonna buy in before you buy. That way you kind of know if it, if it fits your lifestyle. So potential quality issues. So another con um, that we really try and mitigate on the front end, so it is definitely possible um, that there's quality issues. I mean, sometimes the houses are built quickly um, and we really, you know, advise you to be part of that process. Visit often, we'll visit often if you're out of state or we go together often because there are several checkpoints throughout that process. Um, but it is important to keep an eye on the quality and, you know, people a lot of times will ask me like, well, what's the best builder? And it, it really comes down to how much you're babysitting that process. And, you know, one builder may use the same subcontractor as another builder. So it doesn't necessarily matter who the builder is. It's the, being involved in that process. So we're happy to be a part of that as well. Um, limited landscaping and amenities. Um, you'll obviously not going to have as much freedom. You're going to have to stick within the design review of that of that community as far as landscaping and several other amenities. Um, however, that's something that's pretty easy to work around. And sometimes it's just a matter of proposing your idea, but it usually all the landscaping, those types of things um, come in after the fact. But it is important to note as far as the community amenities is that you know, you're moving into a new neighborhood, especially if it's at the beginning stages and you might be driving further for the grocery store and you might be driving further to um, go to those doctor's appointments. And, you know, you might have some growing pains in the schools because they're all just fresh and new and getting started. Um, but it's also a great way to just jump in and be a part of it and um, be, be helpful in that process. So, you know, obviously some flip side of the coin to that too. As far as our next bullet point, appreciation uncertainty, it 
it's a great opportunity, especially if you are getting in at the beginning of that community to really see that appreciation grow. Builders are not keen on ever decreasing their base price. So you know that that base price is going to increase over time. But we want people to go into this knowing, you know, that they're planning on this for maybe a long term, two, three, four, five years at least um, to stay in that home. Because, you know, if you go turn around and sell your house after two years or so, um, and I think we've heard these stories before, is then you're competing with the builder and that's tough to do. So we just want you to have a timeline in mind and we can kind of walk you through that and make sure that, you know, they're selling on pace to make sure that you're not competing with the builder if you're planning to resell the house in five years or so. Just questions that we we get all the time and we want to make sure that you're comfortable with those things. And it's it's so much more than just going in and being like, I love this lot. I want to build a house here. You really have to know what's happening in the community and the long-term projection. A couple other cons, additional costs. I mean, that's I, that's also with any house, but for sure you're going to have that landscaping cost, which is going to be something that happens after closing, um, specifically the backyard. Usually that's not done um, by the builder. And then window coverings, um, we have some great resources there too. So it's not catastrophic, but just things to keep in mind. And then basement finish, we kind of were chatting about this offline. So it's easy to have the builder do the basement finish, but it is going to cost you more, most likely. So we always like to have that discussion as far as how important is it that you get that basement finished? Do you need it right away? Could you wait one to two years? Because we can help you kind of get that done at a cheaper cost after the fact. If you have that cash on hand, if you don't have that cash on hand, then it might just be easier to go with the builder, you know, at, at the time of contract. So Again, just points to consider. Um, I think we talked a little bit about the less established infrastructure that can be a, a good and a bad thing, um, but just things to keep in mind. Anything you wanted to add to that, Sherry? Yeah, I mean, I think the visiting the property often um, can be helpful. Uh, things that you can catch um, possibly early on. Um, I can give you an example um, that we, for quality issues that we ran into were tile, you know, especially tile. For some reason, the tiling thing can happen quickly and fast. And there have been several times when we had a dry stack on a two-story uh, fireplace that when we saw it at the, you know, this was months before the home was going to be finished, we knew it had to be redone. Um, it just looked awful. So you know, we can catch those quality issues ahead of time um, if we're watching for them. Um, the established infrastructure, it really, again, depends on the community. Uh, back years ago, when we were building up Anthem, if anyone um, knows Anthem in Broomfield, which kind of Boulder, Broomfield area, uh, when that first started, the schools hadn't been built yet. So for the first several years, we were getting bust from uh, Anthem over to different schools in the area until those schools were established and, and built. So there's also um, those types of questions to be asking um, if that's important to you, uh, living in a construction zone, all those things that can be a con. Um, but again, if you know them ahead of time and you're expecting them, I think you know it's just knowledge and making sure that you're aware of it and comfortable with those, those cons. Um, again, with the additional costs, um, Typically, and again, with the infrastructure, you're going to be getting a lot of new things, but those do come at another price. Um, usually within your tax structure, we'll have metro districts or special taxing districts, um, and the amenities are fabulous, but you are paying for the new school. You're going to be paying for the construction of the streets and lights and electrical. Um, so those do, do come at a cost and it usually is within a higher tax bracket. So you may have a resale house um, in the same area, uh, but it's been an older established neighborhood and those taxes are much lower. So it is, again, you know, you're getting a lot of plus for it, but there is a cost to it. So we have to keep that in mind. Yeah, the special taxing district is kind of a even more detailed conversation. So, you know. 
make sure you ask those questions if it's, it's something you're interested in. Okay, so I'll let you hand off and um, chat about the location and the lot. Yeah, so location starting, you know, we start with location. Um, and just like we were going to would do with a new resale and we'll have that conversation. Is it close? Do you need to be close to work? Does it matter? Are you working from home? All those things that, you know, we get into location. Uh, then we start to drill down a little bit on, okay, let's say you want to live in Arvada, you want to live in Erie, you want to live in Boulder. Um, once we figure out what that location is, then we can take a look at the builders that are there um, and then kind of drill down on what builder, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in the customization part, but what builder is going to be more aligned with your needs and your goals? Um, because some of them do things very, very differently. And then once we get into that location, then we're looking at the lot. And the lot is extraordinarily important. Um, there's always, and this is again on the base price, uh, there will also be a lot premium. Some of them have a lot premium, um, standard lot premium that's already included in that base price. But more often than not lately, we're seeing the base price plus a lot premium. And those lot premiums can be minimal, whatever you consider minimal, sometimes they're 20,000. And they can go up to 120, $150,000 if they have a view, if they're gorgeous lots, if they back to open space. So again, uh, when we're really starting the process with you, we're gonna be looking at your budget, your total budget and trying to take that whole pie and break it out by base price, lot, look, um, and then we also know based on the builder approximately what it's going to take to customize that house for you. Um, but different lots are gonna have different prices. Like I said, views are one, um, whether they are stacked on top of each other, two parallel streets and all the houses are looking at their backyards. Uh, we had one example that we were able to help navigate. Um, there were two parallel streets. Every house was looking back behind each other. And then there was one street that was perpendicular uh, going between those two streets that if you got the lot on the corner, you'd be looking at the side of the house. But if you got a middle lot in that particular on that particular street, there were only four houses, it looked straight down and all you got to see was... Um, everybody's backyard and the landscaping and it's gorgeous now. Um, so these particular houses, the floor plan was um, really centered towards the backyard. There were 13 foot ceilings in the living area with these big expansive windows. So you didn't wanna be looking at the back of your other friends, you know, your neighbor's house if you could help it. So the block premium on that one was 40,000. The ones to open space um, were 120,000. So we were able to help navigate those clients to what fit their budget and still met their needs and their goals for that house. Um, we had one that on a street that um, beautiful views and the on that street, we could tell that each house was gonna have some sort of a view. The lot premiums there were from 60,000 to 120,000. The 120,000 were gonna have completely unobstructed views of the whole mountain range, stunning. There was one right next door to one of the $120,000 lots that was only 60,000, which I said only, but in relative speaking. And as it turned out, by the, at the end of the day, that's the lot they picked and they have a spectacular view. There is very little in their way as it turned out the way they angled the, the lots, um, but you don't know that because usually it's a blank canvas. So we really have to investigate those lots and what your goal is. Um, we also, if power lines are important to you, um, traffic, if you wanna be on an open space, all those things um, come into play. If we're outside of certain, in certain counties, there's gonna be fracking. Is there fracking close to you? Are there easements gonna be on your lot? Um, I've had one client that really was very sure she did not want the utility boxes on her lot now as it so we really had to make sure that those were strategically placed and not on her lot because she just didn't want them. Again, privacy, looking into other people's houses, looking to the side wall, 
Um, and sometimes there is a lot that's not selling and there's a reason for it. So just because they are all of a sudden discounting a lot may make it a little more reasonably priced. And But let's check and see if that lot um, has some negatives that you don't want to deal with. Um, and again, the timing of the lot is really important as well. Usually at the very beginning of a community, they will have it set up in phases. And, you know, phase one will be getting this street done first. And you'll be in a construction zone just for a short period of time while that street is getting done, then phase two. But maybe the lot you really like isn't in phase one. It's closer to the street. It doesn't have a view. Some of those better views you have to kind of wait for um, within the process. And sometimes they're the first ones that go. So again, being able to understand the availability of the lot, when it becomes available, and then your timing on when you need to be in the home um, all play into it. So there's a lot to consider when you're talking about the lots and the location. Um, and it's never a one size fits all. And we'll say that a million times in here. It's different for everybody, for your goals, for your needs. And each builder in each house is going to be a little different. Lydia, do you have anything to add? The only thing I would just add to that is, I guess just reiterating what you said as far as just because it's on sale doesn't mean it's the, the best option. And I feel like I've seen that probably more than anything is that the builder will push you to a certain lot and be like, you know, this one's on sale, we're knocking this money off and, you know, it has this spectacular view, but then you do a little bit more research and you realize that there is a fracking well, you know, a mile away, or there is a busy road that you really, once you walk the lot and sit on top of that lot, you hear, and it may be that it's, you know, a mile or two away, but that sound travels and it carries up. And those are things where, you know, they'll sell you on the view or, or they'll sell you on the price of the lot, but in the end, is it really a smart decision? So we just, we just want you to walk in with it, with your eyes wide open and just know, know those different things. So it's, it is super important to understand not just that neighborhood, but what's happening around it. Mm -hmm. So one thing to understand about Colorado's real estate contracts, which are regulated at the state level, um, our Colorado resale contracts are very buyer friendly. Um, they have a lot of places to that once you go under contract with a home that you get to check it out, do inspections, all those things that um, will lessen the risk for the buyer. And by the end of it, um, you will have your home and you will have checked it out and feel really cool. comfortable with it. Uh, on the flip side, builder contracts are written by lawyers that work for the builder, and they are extremely favored in that builder's um, in that builder's favor. So timelines very wide. They may say, "Oh yeah, we'll get you in in ten months to a year," and sixteen months later, you are still waiting for your house. And there is no obligation on their part. Sometimes they may give you two to four years within that builder's contract to actually get your house done. So, you know, typically we don't see that, but, you know, world events come up, pandemics happen and supply chain issues happen. And so you just never know. So there is all of that that we're watching out for you. I did have one client during um, right after the pandemic, when we were having a lot of the supply chain issues that they, they, um, we're told to go ahead, we could put weight and put their house on the market at drywall, uh, which we did. Um, but delays happened after drywall and we ended up padding, selling their home for them. We put a post occupancy agreement in place so that they could stay until the home was technically done. Uh, the most we could do there was two months. We got them the two months in the negotiation on their selling their property. Unfortunately, it took another two weeks after that um, although the builder was not obligated in the contract, uh, we came in and made sure that the builder actually paid for that second move so that they could stay in a hotel and get some storage space. And we worked it out with the builder. Um, but, uh, there was no obligation on that builder's part to, to do that. So having an advocate in your corner on things like that is important. Um, now on the reverse side of that. So again, builder friendly contract. Their timelines are their timelines. They will 
go at their own pace. Um, and you really don't have a whole lot of uh, leeway in there. So their timelines are, are going to be in stone um, on a builder contract. Uh, when they're ready to close, you have to be ready to close. So um, it's, there's not a whole lot of uh, give and take on that. Um, but again, we can do a lot to mitigate issues. Uh, but the Colorado contract just has a lot more opportunity for, you know, making sure that those negotiations happen. Um, and just another thing to say about builder contracts, builders will not change their contract. They won't. They will not give you a special contract. What we can negotiate are addendums to that contract. And we may be able to negotiate some pricing and some other incentives uh, down the road. So that is the one thing that you have to be aware of. But we will walk through that contract with you um, a little bit better than the salesperson uh, will be pointing out both the pros and the cons um, to those contracts as we walk through them with you. All right. So we're going to chat a little bit about navigating the financing. So oftentimes, majority of the time, a builder will have a preferred lender that they um, will get you set up with. That preferred lender may have um, incentives in play. What we see most often are rate buy downs right now, or they may be uh, giving incentives at the design center if you use that lender. And those are great. And, um, you know, a lot of times we, you know, especially after doing some due diligence, we may, you know, just really suggest that you go that route. However, um, not so much right now, but in past years, over the last 20 or some years that we've been in real estate, I mean, you see sometimes that they may be pushing you to work with a specific lender and that lender's rates or the terms of that loan are not as good as you could get on your own. So even in those situations, we and even in today's situations, we find that it is super important to make sure that you don't just go automatically to the to the builder's lender. Um, it is important to get a second opinion, and we have uh, several really good options, um, especially if you're in a situation where um, you may need to sell your house first in order to buy that next house. I mean, we see that you know, majority of the time, honestly, and it's so important that we're involved at the get go on that to make sure that that timing is correct, that your earnest money is protected, that your house gets on the market at the right time of year to maximize your selling price. I mean, we're looking at probably year cycle um, when you go into a new construction purchase, especially for um, getting something at the beginning. Um, so we really want to make sure that we are you know, prepping your house to sell, putting it on at the right exact time, um, really making sure that we are capturing all the great things about your house. And so again, just like super important to not just go right into it and just sign on the dotted line with that uh, builder's lender. Um, you also might have some options to do. Uh, we have several lenders that do bridge loans. So you could potentially just move into that new construction house um, without being contingent. You might have a little bit more leeway with the pricing and the negotiation that way. And then that also frees you up to potentially put your house on the market at a better time. And, you know, kind of specifically speaking to things like I know, for example, I've had a couple clients that um, closed in December of this past year. And, you know, it wouldn't have been ideal for them to put their house on the market, but in order to get like a year end closeout pricing and really negotiate the price down on their new house, um, getting it closed by the end of the year was advantageous to them um, from a financial perspective. So again, like we just want to make sure that, you know, we're looking at that whole picture for you and how can we maximize not only the negotiation on the new house, but the, the sales price of the house that you may or may not be selling. Um, in addition, like, um, I think this is important to note is that, you know, you're going into this contract and you're going to buy this house. Most likely it's more expensive than what you currently own. And, um, you know, if you were buying a resale house, you have basically 30 days to get, you know, all of your financing in line and to close. 
Well, in a builder's contract, you're getting under contract with them and you have 30 days to get that, that loan approval, but then you kind of hurry up and wait, especially if you're working with their lender, if they're, if they're dictating the timeline. Um, so a lot can happen. Like as Sherry mentioned, we can have pandemics, we can have supply chain issues and you have your own things that are going on. So, you know, you could get into that position and then lose your job, or you could, you know, have a baby in that time frame, and you, um, or you could lose a family member and you could have life changes that make that not so ideal anymore. So we, you know, we want to be aware of that and just plan uh, for an exit strategy if you needed it and that your earnest money is protected. So again, you know, if you are working with their lender, you may have less flexibility. Whereas if you um, have a few options in your corner, then you're just protected a little bit better. Um, is there anything I missed on that, Sherry? I think. No, I think you got everything. Um, you know, the, again, we do have a list um, by lender or by builder on the lender's incentives. So we do know who's offering what at what time. Sometimes they will offer a special rate for the available houses. So maybe they're not the ones that you um, are going to be able to build from scratch. They're what we call a spec home or they were going to be bought by somebody else and it that fell through, which has happened a lot. So um, over the past, past few years, so you never know what's going to happen. Um, and I think the big one that we just experienced were when people went under contract in let's say 2022 before uh, the pan or the interest rates went up. Um, and then all of a sudden the interest rates went up and they were not able to afford that home any longer based on that interest rate. So we really want to make sure that we're navigating any upsets for you. Um, but that did put a lot of homes back on the market um, as they were finishing up. So you know, there's all sorts of things out there to for to, to consider, and that's yeah. I think that is um, really important. Is like with that lender decision, if you're getting financing, is you know making sure that there is a rate lock option in place. And I mean, we even see, saw on cash purchases too, because people went under contract and they had the cash, you know, in the stock market, and then. Um, they were going to pull that money out and buy the house and then their stocks weren't worth as much as they thought. And so then that caused an issue too. So, you know, just again, making sure that you kind of have a couple backup options in place. So, um, but I think that's the yeah. majority of that. And I'll let you talk about customization. Yeah. Um, well, we talked a little bit about the lot um, and we've also mentioned that every builder is different. Um, let's say there's a few builders out there that say, oh, everything's included. Um, we're going to give you option. You know, they may have a color palette choice, or they may have some other choices that you can pick, but pretty much all, all these options are included and you don't get to do anything else. Um, and it makes sense for a lot of people, uh, to do it that way. That base price is a little closer to, the end price um, that way. But um, again, you're going to end up with uh, a home that you weren't going to actually get to upgrade much. Um, and for some people that works out really well. Um, they get overwhelmed with those decisions. They just say, okay, I'll just take all the standard features and figure it out as we go. Um, the other one that we're seeing a little bit more is for the builders, they can actually um, obviously get better costs if they buy things in bulk. So what they're, um, we're seeing a lot of right now is they're offering packages. And I've seen you know builders with a set of six packages or a set of 20 packages, and they'll all be different levels of cost. There'll be different levels of um, quality. Uh, there may be a appliance package that's upgraded to uh, professional grade or, all sorts of fun things in there. So again, designing that dream home is going to be all these things that we're going to look at. I want to check the slide over one. So again, picking the lot, <clears throat> there are a lot of things that have to be figured out prior to that first contract. Um, picking the lot is obviously one. Uh, the floor plan, you know, we want to walk through it and make sure it's a floor plan that you can live with. 
uh, it's amazing what you'll find in model homes. You'll walk through the model and go, this is the floor plan. And then we'll stand there with you and go, okay, how are you going to live in this space? Where does the television go? <clears throat> We've seen some that have just been as much as you think that at this day and age that they would have considered all those things. Do you like having your television above the fireplace? Because a lot of the new modern designs are that way. Some people don't like it above the fireplace. They want it at eye level. That's me personally. I don't like it above the fireplace. Is there another spot for it? So we'll talk through all that when we're looking at floor plans. Um, do you have young children, older children? Do you want your children on the same level as you uh, close by? Or do you want some space between your children and uh, your, yourselves? Um, are you empty nesters like myself and want a ranch home that uh, just is one level that you can expand and contract as needed? Maybe the basement's finished and when family comes, you can move in there. So we'll really talk floor plan, what your needs are, and really be able to decipher that. Um, there are floor plans with primary bedrooms on the main level, and then the secondary bedrooms are upstairs. So we'll go through all of that. Um, on what your preferences are. Uh, Lydia talked a little bit about the size and the type of the basement. Options right there are going to be whether they have a basement at all. Um, do you have a crawl space option? Do you have a partial basement option? Do you have a full basement option? Do you have a walkout basement option? So there's all those types of options um, with the basement. A lot of builders, if especially if they're going to... Um, build the home for you, do not want to, because of Colorado's expansive soil, they don't want to put the finish a basement um, on the slab. So they're going to require, if you're going to go with them building the basement out, that they will require you putting in a structural floor. Sometimes that's a little bit more costly, but boy, and at the end, you won't have cracks in the carpet. You're not going to be right on uh, the concrete. Um, and uh, in that basement. So again, I've had many basements that have been built right on slab and between the pad and the carpet and everything else down there or the luxury vinyl, we can get some soundproofing and that works just fine. And that might be a lesser of expense that you might wanna do down the road that we can talk to you about. <clears throat> some builders don't allow you to, because of that warranty, don't want you to build the basement out if you're going to do it in the first year or two. So again, all those types of things need to be taken into consideration. Um, elevation, again, that's the way it looks from the outside. It is, you know, stucco versus siding, which is versus rock or brick or, and each community hopefully has usually three options for a floor plan. Um, that way there is not that when you go into the community, it's not looking completely cookie cutter. Uh, that uh, they won't let two of the same floor plan or two of the same elevation be next to each other. Uh, the colors of the house usually have to be picked right at the time of on the external, um, right at that initial um, contract so that they can, as they're selling out the houses, that they're making sure that not every house is the same color and there's, there's a variety within there. And there are going to be some interior upgrades that you have to decide up front. Um, sometimes on the floor plan, they'll have options. This space can be either a fourth bedroom or it can be a loft. Um, you can have a, um, so they'll need that for the walls. Maybe it's, you want a luxury shower instead of a bathtub and a shower. So all those types of things um, that are going to be more structural to the build have to be done at contract because when the builder goes out to get the permits, they need to know what that, you know, what that house is going to look like and how it's going to sit. So all sorts of fun things to decide even prior to going under contract. <clears throat> what do you mean? Yeah, then, I think, oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think you talked a lot about a lot of this already, but um, sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead. <laughs> was there anything else you wanted to add on that slide? No, not on that slide at all. Okay. Um, so then, of course, there's the the fun stuff. Um, I've had people get all excited about going to the design center only to find out that, you know, their packages were were what they had. And when they do the packages, you know, you may like the carpet from this package, but like the rest of it in this package, they don't let you intermingle a lot of the time. So we can work on that at the beginning. Um, sometimes you get to go to the design center. 
And again, we want to make sure that you're looking at your budget, staying within where you are comfortable, and we can help guide. Um, you know, people think, oh, I'm just going to take the standard features of everything. I won't spend a whole lot of money at the design center. And you get into the design center and you want to upgrade your light fixtures, or you want to extra, you want extra electrical plugs, or you need Wi-Fi, or you decide that the standard granite on the countertops isn't what you like. There are going to be certain things that you want to get right at the beginning. Um, there are going to be other things like a backsplash, for instance. Do you want them to put in the backsplash? Do you want your own backsplash? So there are certain things that we can offset and they won't be into the price of the home. But again, you're going to have to, if it's something important to you, if a backsplash is important to you at the onset, you have the cash afterwards to have that put in. Um, so <clears throat> flooring, again, do you want to upgrade? What's important in flooring? I always say pad, make sure you upgrade pad. Um, whether you go with the standard carpet or not, um, the pad is so important. But we'll walk you through that. Make sure that you're staying within your budget, that you're not getting too overwhelmed um, at the design center if, if that's the route you choose to go. Um, but again, you can spend a lot of money. And some people can even get their window blinds and their landscaping and all of that within their package. They just want it all completely done by the builder. It'll be all in your mortgage payment. You're done. Um, other people like to just parse it out um, a little bit more. Anything else, Lydia, that you can think of there? Um, I mean, the only thing I would just say is just be wary of of some of the items um, being significantly upcharged by the builder. So, you know, a lot of the builders that, or I'm sorry, the buyers that we have worked with, you know, we've gone to that design center meeting with them and then help them to pick what strategically works and is best to do at that time frame, And then, you know, after closing, have been able to help them to do some of those other finishes at a fraction of the cost. Um, so that way you're, you know, you're just making a smart decision and you're, um, have some equity in that house and you're not, um, just paying for something because that's the price tag that the builder gave you. So. I think it's also one thing that, um, we want to mention is we also will get a feel for how much the upgrades are going on in that particular development. We're going to try to uh, make sure that you're not the most expensive house on the block because you put so many upgrades into your house that when we go to resell, sometimes those upgrades will not pay off at resale. Your return on your investment won't be as high on some um, upgrades than, than others. So it's not something else that we want to watch for is what's happening in the community and when you know, even if it's five, 10 years down the road, that you're going to get the value out of that. Is that lot premium that you're paying $100,000 for going to get you $100,000 more when you go to sell the house? Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. So that's all things that we're going to be watching for you and, and kind of using our expertise to help guide you. Cool. Well, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about just the timelines and inspections, and this is actually a really staggering statistic. So, you know, although it's very common for buyers of existing homes to hire their own inspector before closing, it's rare with new construction. And in fact, only one in seven new home buyers um, did not complete an inspection. So we find actually it's even more important on a brand new home to make sure that you're getting not only one inspection, but inspections along the way. And a lot of times people will say, oh, you know, the salesperson will say, you know, it's getting inspected multiple times by the county, um, by the city. And that is true, but it's different when you're hiring your own inspector to look at it from your point of, point of view. Did they put the electrical socket where they said they were going to put it? Um, did they enlarge the island like I paid for? Um, so all those things um, really do make a difference. And um, I'll go into it a little bit more on the next page, but there's varying stages of that construction process. So as Sherry mentioned, you know, you're picking the lot, you're picking those structural upgrades. Um, but when you get to the point where that is all in place, the permits have happened and the building has started, um, it is super important to have 
an inspection done before um, the walls are closed in and the draw wall has been put up because at that point, you know, you don't really know what's behind the walls anymore. So um, let's move on to that next slide and we can kind of talk through that a little bit more. Um, so before anything does happen, we'll have a pre-construction meeting. Um, that's usually over the phone or on Zoom. And that's just to make sure that, you know, the, the builder has the garage on the side that you wanted the garage to be on and making sure that the setbacks are correct and make sure they have the right floor plan. So um, make sure the permits are in place um, for a four bedroom house, not a three bedroom house with a loft. So that's part of the um, checks and balances that we will do in that pre-construction meeting. Then after that, um, we'll move on to that pre-drywall walk and inspection, which I kind of mentioned. So, you know, obviously making sure what you picked is there is super important, but also from um, the standpoint of looking at it from, you know, five to 10 years down the road, it's really helpful in that time frame to be able to take videos and pictures of the walls before um, the drywall goes up so that you know if you're hanging something, you know, you're not going to be putting a nail through a plumbing um, a plumbing line and have water spur everywhere. Um, or, you know, it may just be, um, I want to just kind of know this for reference. So that's another benefit of that pre-drywall pre walk. Um, but in addition, we always recommend an inspector, and we do have several recommendations, go in and look at it from a, a subjective viewpoint and make sure everything that you are paying for is there and that, you know, the city inspector or the county inspector isn't just quickly, you know, signing off and, um, you know, initialing on that checkbox, but actually making sure that it's done. Um, then, you know, things get a little bit quiet for a couple of months. I mean, you start to see the house come into shape and that's super exciting. And again, we encourage you to visit often. Um, but about two weeks before closing, one to two weeks before closing, you'll have um, a buyer orientation where they will show you all the different ins and outs of the house. Um, and, you know, if especially if it's your first home, like how to change the furnace filter, you know, how to maintain the hot water heater, um, all the different things um, that make sure that you're going to be, you know, a successful homeowner. And that's great. And we love to be a part of that walkthrough as well. Um, it's also an opportunity to, again, make sure that everything is good to go. So we have that same inspector that came for the pre-drywall walk will come back through and make sure, you know, that everything is working. Like there's no leaks under the sink. Um, they'll come back and they'll uh, scope the sewer line, make sure there's no construction debris, make sure the sewer line is correctly attached. We've had issues with that too, where it wasn't attached correctly. And that could have been a monstrous issue later on down the road, but it was a few hundred dollars that the buyer spent and that we encourage them to spend um, to make sure that um, they move in and they get to enjoy their house. So um, again, um, in that time frame, another general inspector will come make sure everything is good from that standpoint. Um, we also, you know, encourage a lot of builders are now starting to do radon mitigation or they're going to do a passive system. So that's something we look for and talk about in that time frame as well. Then the day of closing, you generally come back through, do another walkthrough, make sure all the items on the punch list from the inspector and maybe anything that you marked as a blue tape item, like most often we see is paint drywall fixes are done. And then you'll go to closing and it's a happy little celebration. So that's awesome. Um, then we just want you to know that we're, we're there for you, you know, after that process. So you close, you're in the house a month, you always see more things as you're living in the house. And so we encourage you to keep a running list. And most builders will have a one month punch list or one month walk of some sort where they come and fix those things that maybe just weren't as apparent um, before you close and actually were living in the house, you know, 24 hours a day. Um, and then after you're kind of getting to the end of that first year, you're going to have an 11 month um, walkthrough or punch list of some sort. And, you know, usually that's your last chance to get things fixed before um, the warranty for that bumper to bumper warranty that we talked about um, goes away. So we encourage you to bring the inspector back again, because 
then they can come back through and make sure that there's no settling that's abnormal. Um, make sure that the soils have compacted um, the correct way. I had a situation a couple of years ago where they were getting close to that one year mark and the soil had compacted um, so much because they hadn't added enough soil. And so then the soil was actually pushing water towards this foundation. So instead of a positive slope, it was a negative slope towards the foundation. And that was something we really had to advocate and push to have that corrected, but we did. And, you know, it was super important. I mean, that's one of the most important things. So again, you know, we are there for you after the closing and make sure that you're in good shape. Um, I think biggest takeaway is visit your home often. If you're not in state, which it happens a lot. Um, I mean, I've got multiple buyers under contract right now who are not in state and we're happy to go check on your house. Um, we'll go to these meetings for you. We'll FaceTime you. Um, we'll send you videos. Um, we're happy to do that. So, um, and then we're kind of coming to the tail end of our presentation, but just a couple other things to note. Um, so a lot of times people think of new construction of, I'm like, I'm just buying this, um, you know, for myself, but there's a lot of other things that you can think about. Um, so I'll, we'll push into the next slide so that we can chat about that. Um, so for example, I know that I myself see this all the time and I'm like, will my children ever be able to live in Colorado? It's becoming so expensive and interest rates are high, you know, and they don't have equity to, you know, just go out and buy a house and put a strong down payment down. So, you know, buying a new construction home, you know, especially if you're able to take advantage of some of those incentives as far as rate buy downs can be a great option to, you know, co-sign with your kid or even just buy the house and rent it out. And then um, you can deed it over to your kids later on in life. And if they decide to move to California, they can sell that house and take that equity and have a nest egg of some sort. So, you know, with all the, um, the movement into Colorado, um, I would just say that it is super important to be thinking down the line. So you're not just thinking about the house that you're living in today, but like, how can you set yourself up for a future for your family and for your kids? And um, it's just, it's something that we often don't think about, but it is an amazing legacy that you can leave for your family. So we are big proponents of that. And we really want to make sure that we're setting up our families for success, not just for that moment, but um, later on down the road. And that can be the other way around too. You know, you could be purchasing something that's going to work for your parents or um, something along those lines that can be moved into um, when the time is right. So uh, another really important thing to talk about, um, and we'll just mention it briefly, is that there are opportunities for investors too. So a lot of times, um, Jim just had this situation with one of his clients, but he was um, ha had an investment property that he owned for a long time. Um, it was an old house built in the 1900s and he was just sick of the up updating and upgrading and the fixing of that house. And it had been a great rental, but he was just ready for something that was less maintenance. So Jim was able to sell that investment property for him and get him into a brand new, um, new construction property um, that he is going to rent out. But in the meantime, the builder wanted to hold on and rent back at a great rent, by the way, um, to the new owner who was Jim's client. And so that was a great situation where he's getting, you know, a great rent and he is able to capitalize on some of those um, buy downs as far as interest rate go um, to really get in, in a position where he can cash flow well. And then he just knows he has a great tenant in place who's going to take care of everything and is always going to pay and always going to pay on time and pay a good market um, or above market rent. Um, again, you know, we've talked so much about the whole process, but it is important to note that the deepest discounts. Um, are going to happen when um, they're standing inventory, you know, at the end of the quarter, end of the year. And uh, we, we really watch for those and we keep an eye out for those. So if that's something that's on your radar, whether you're buying for yourself or buying for an investment, um, just raise your hand, let us know, and we'll, we'll keep an eye out as well. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for that slide. 
Um, talking about the closing process, I think we have chatted through all of those things as well, but I guess we would just say, you know, one other thing that um, we want to set you up for success for is just helping you get connected in the community. So we may know other people that live in that community. Um, we may know that there's a Facebook group for that community or a next door group, or that they have social outings on Tuesdays. Um, so any of those things we're going to share with you and just encourage you to get involved in that community. Um, it's a fun time and, and just enjoy it. And so um, we, we want to be there for those things as well. Um, then lastly, we just wanted to, you know, talk about the importance of being represented by an agent. Um, it is important if it is something that is on your radar, just let us know because typically um, you have to state that you're being represented in that first visit. Um, a lot of builders are super helpful and super friendly and they, they really do want to work with a real estate agent because they want to make sure everything goes through and they want to make sure, you know, a contingent house is sold on time and they want to make sure that, you know, the buyer is pre-qualified. And that's some of the teamwork that we, we do with the builder. Um, but as we've talked about all these different things, like I said at the beginning, I had no idea that we had this much to say, but having that professional representation and advocacy along every step of this process is, is so important. And it's easy for one of those things to go sideways and to mess everything up. And, you know, before you know it, your earnest money is lost, or before you know it, you have a major construction defect or, um, you know, you're not able to get financing after all. So we really, um, pride ourselves on being there for this whole process and making sure that you're well taken care of. Um, and in all these different facets. So, um, you know, as I mentioned, we do a lot of coordinating and communication with the builder as well. We've talked about the con contingencies. Um, as far as negotiation, you know, we we may have worked in that neighborhood before. We know um, the sales representative. We kind of know where they might come to on the price. We may know what's negotiable. We may know, um, you know, what they're going to give you at the design center, or that there might be a little bit more wiggle room. Um, we may know that that lot premium isn't a hard number. So, you know, just all those different things we want to bring to the table for you to make sure that you um, are getting the best possible price, the best possible lot, the best possible resale longer down the road. Um, obviously, we're going to help you with due diligence and inspections. Um, and it is important to, to you to know that the price is the price. So the builder are the builders not allow allowed to give you a different price if you're unrepresented. So the base price is the price. Um, they're expecting to work with a real estate agent. So really it behooves you to work with someone who is going to advocate and take care of you on your behalf for all the different reasons that we mentioned. Um the sales agents that are employed there in those offices, are, you know, they're exclusively working for the builder. And so they have no ties to you. I mean, they may be helpful. They may give suggestions, but at the end of the day, they're employed by the builder and their duty is to protect the builder's interests, not yours. So um, just one thing, you know, that kind of has stuck with me and in, in talking about this and researching for this is, you know, expert advice is expensive, you know, but the alternative is even costlier. So if you think about going to meet with a, a lawyer, you know, you can probably find the cheapest lawyer, but they may not think about something that you should have thought about or that a more tenured lawyer would have thought about. And then in the end, you're the one that loses. So just important things to keep in mind. Sherry, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, you you know, most buyers, you don't know what you don't know. And it comes down to uh, having someone in your corner that is going to have some experience behind it, that we've been through this before, that we know what's available, what's going on. So <clears throat> don't, I mean, again, I think a lot of people get the feeling that they're going to get a better deal if they don't use a uh, buyer's agent. And that's just not the case. You not only will... Uh, not be able to negotiate that base price because they're not allowed to give you incentives to not use a realtor. Uh, it's because it's just a complete conflict of interest. You want somebody in your corner. You want somebody representing you. And typically, um, 
the cost is not, you don't bear that cost of having us in your corner. So there's really, generally speaking, not a reason to not have us um, in your corner and making sure that uh, we are there for you um, all the way through it. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all for staying with us through this um, whole webinar. I mean, hopefully you found it very helpful. Um, as you know, we kind of finish up here, we have um, already mentioned that we do do keep an eye on the different incentives by different builders. And then we've also done a fair amount of video walkthroughs of different communities. So you're welcome to kind of check those out on our website, um, on Instagram, on Facebook, on any of our socials. Um, but if you're interested in kind of hearing a little bit about the process um, more pertaining to you, or you just want to hear about some of the incentives, you know, we have kind of a running list that we can share with you or share what's important to you. So just keep that in mind. And um, we're just excited. I think this is a, this is a great option for a lot of people. Um, and, you know, we're, we're here for it. So let us know if you have any questions and thanks for taking the time to listen and uh, we will chat with you at our next one.